Hi guys, welcome back to Wheel of Beard Reviews. Tonight we're talking about Strange Adventures number four, written by Tom King, with art by Mitch Gerard and Doc Shaner, um, or Evan Doc Shaner. Um, so, in um, Tom King is a writer that um, puts a lot of himself into his writing. Um, so the, the pieces of his work that I have read, um, so Mr. Miracle is a lot of conversations about being a good husband, being a good father, um, issues with mental illness and things like that, and then you have the vision that he wrote over on Marvel where it was talking about trying to be the perfect family man and build the perfect family um, around you and everything just kind of goes to hell because that's the way life is. And then you have Batman, which is talking about um, the vows you made in a previous life. Um, do those still Are those still good? Are they still valid now that your life has moved on and doing other things? Um, now, in this one, I feel like it's, a, it's not quite as emotionally centric or family centric as all of those other ones are i think this one is touches on a lot of his experience before he was a comic book writer so if you don't know in a previous life before um tom king became a writer he was a cia counterintelligence agent um for about seven years i think and i see a lot of um the iraq war and everything that is going on and has been going on in the middle east for the last two decades if not longer in this and in a lot of situations so i think tom king is kind of injecting that part of himself into this book and of course i'll point out places where i think that's happening um in the story as we as we go through it here also one other thing that's happening in this issue that's different than other issues which i think is really interesting is um there are dual artists on this like i said we got mitch gerard's and we got um doc shaner on this one um i think um in the previous issues we had uh shaner who has a very clean idea idyllic um, kind of almost 50s and 60s pop art style um, or kind of you know that kind of science that kind of older science fiction style um, in uh, doing the Rand stuff kind of the past stuff and all of the uh, on earth stuff and the present day stuff was done by Mitch Gerard he's got kind of a darker grittier almost messier gr a sloppier I don't want to say sloppy he's not a sloppy artist but you just kind of get that feel for it it's like it's lived in and it's grimy and in this issue they kind of flip so in this one we have um, some flashbacks on Earth that uh, Shaner is doing, um, and then Mr. Terrific goes to Ran to do some investigation there, to read some, uh, you know, government documents and do his research there and everything, and Gerard is doing that art, and it's darker and grittier, and that's where kind of all those... Um, Iraq war and everything um, similarities come in um, and then we get um, his wife coming in um, at the very end being very very suspicious again it's just a couple panels there but like uh, in last issue I thought she came off really really squirrely like she was the person behind a lot of this um, and there's also I think a really good movie tie-in or callback um, in this that we'll talk about when we get there so all in all another fantastic issue I really think this series is starting to come together it's picking up steam we're a quarter of the way through this 12 issue miniseries and it's just getting really really interesting so let's go ahead and uh and dive into the book here before we do um if you like this video um after we're, after you're done with the video and um you want to subscribe to the channel please to go ahead and do that hit that subscribe button before you click away all right, so we open up here in uh, the war in a flashback to it. We've got uh, Strange here shooting off his jet back to a ship, kind of kicking off uh, an attack and calling back to his troops here. Hey, let's go. Um, let's start the attack for Ron. And then you see them all um, rolling over the hill. They're very victorious, very um, uh, movie-like, very cinematic. And then you got the uh, Patek here on the other side um, fighting back. Uh, Adam Strange here saying, Alana, I love you. And then, you know, more of the war stuff. And then right as he is um, about to roll in, he gets Zeta beamed uh, back home. He says, almost there. This is history. Friends, this is freedom. Keep formation. Uh, we have them. Don't give up. Ron will be. And then the most illest of timings, he gets immediately pulled back to Earth via the Zeta Beam that he can't control, of course, and then um, some of the other flashbacks, and here is him trying to get back um, to the war because he feels awful that he got pulled away right when he was leading the charge into battle. 
And then here we've got um, our present day where Mr. Terrific is going to Ron to start his um, the, the part of his investigation where he needs to be there to look at all of those documents and everything from the war to kind of get a picture of what was going on to see if there were, were indeed war crimes. So he says um, most of this is just him uh, kind of calling out to the, the you know the, the, the airport or whatever that he's uh, the spaceport that he's coming in to, um, to lock down. And then the person here meets him and says, uh, ah, terrific what a pleasure uh, to see you we've heard so much about you we're we're, fa we're such fans of your work uh, i'm karnath assistant to the chief of staff of the science and political council i'm handling all alien visitors you're the first uh, you're our first from earth since uh, since the war except for adam of course and then he says, I thought uh, Sardath would be meeting me. And she says, yes, well, the chief minister has been called off to an urgent matter. Uh, the, the rebuild, like the damage, is as uh, extensive as it is demanding. There are always, there's always a crisis somewhere. I think it had something to do with uh, energy transportation. But don't worry, I'm here to provide for all your needs. And then she starts talking about, you know, we can go to the library um, and get um, all of your information. He says, um, uh, she, he, she says, uh, absolutely, that it's all been arranged we're taking you directly to the library where you can work there as long as you'd like. I should note that the Rainian files are fully available in English. Unfortunately, we were unable to tr arrange translation of many of the Bakit documents. The, well, the, at the risk of sounding less than modern, the uh, the rather barbaric language of the Bakits is beyond the comprehension of even our, of our most advanced machines. I know this is an inconvenience and I do apologize, but I feel that you'll uh, find everything you need in the Ronian sections. And so that's when I really started to think that this um, is kind of paralleling some real world events so essentially what you have here is an outside third party investigator wanting to go see if there were potentially war crimes in the Iran uh, Iran Bikit war and the ad lead administrator isn't there to meet him. They send a lackey, for lack of a better word, to give him the runaround. They say, hell, you can have our documents, but these over here, we couldn't get those translated, so I'm sorry you can't have those. But everything you need should be right here. Uh-huh. No, not really. It's the, the equivalent of giving someone um, a, a document from, uh, like, the Freedom of Information Act or something, and it's just dripping black because it's been redacted. Like, the only thing that's on there is the date and, like, the word the or something like that. That's kind of what I feel like is going on right here. Actually, it reminds me a lot of the movie The Report. It's on Amazon. Uh, Amazon, it stars Adam Driver about the report of um, the torture report, the waterboarding and everything that America did. Um, so that's a great movie. Go watch it. It'll piss you off. So have a drink when you're watching it. But something like what's going on here is reminding me of, of that, right? So third-party investigator coming in where someone maybe knows that they did wrong and they're doing everything they can to hide it, um, or doing everything to hide it via the official documents that they have. It's like, oh, you can have these that don't indict us, but you can't have these that maybe have our, you know, our dirty laundry in it or, or something, uh, to that effect, right? And then this page over here is um, Sardath calling out to, or making a phone call to, to Mr. Terrific and basically saying, hey, I'm sorry I couldn't be there to greet you. I'm over here dealing with this other thing. And just to give my un, uh, un, um, unsolicited, uh, very biased opinion on what's going on, uh, Adam Strange is, of course, my son-in-law, but I, and I, I, I've seen him in action a dozen times, and I in no way think he's guilty of anything um, that, that he's being accused of. And then, of course, as he's saying that... Um, terrific is you know being driven through this city where everything is still just in absolute rubble um from from the war and then here we go back to earth and again gosh god this doc shaner art is amazing i mean look at that just like perfect idyllic um green lantern right there that's a one pager isn't it um so basically um adam strange here is you know mad that he got pulled right out of the war and he's asking um uh, hal jordan to it's like dude give me a ride back to rant i need to get back there and and get back to my war and hal basically says uh, i spoke to the guardians uh, about ran uh, at length some swearing was involved of course it was and it says um at the end of the day i wish i had better news pal but they they say 
and it's not unreasonable that the official policy of the Corps in regard to the Rand Pickett War is neutrality. I transport one of uh, the best fighters available, an Earthman, one of my people to Rand that's just like the Corps joining the side. So he's basically saying, like, look, it's an internal policy, and, you know, if we were, you know, this is kind of a, uh, um, a kind of a galactic universal conflict of, you know, you have the Earth, you have the Corps, and you have Ran over here, if you shrink that scale down to um, something that would be just within the, within, you know, the our planet, the Earth, right? So you've got the Middle East over here, and they're having civil wars amongst themselves. Then you've got America over here, and you've got, like, another country over here, maybe England or Canada, Australia, whatever you want to say. Um, and, you know, someone over here is asking this country, is like, hey, can you give me a ride there? And they're like, if I give you a ride there, then that's effectively meaning that I'm taking your side and I get pulled into the war and that's not what I'm about. We need to leave them alone over there and I don't want to get pulled into that. And he even says um, down here, and this is another thing that made me think about um, the current conflicts in the Middle East. He says, um, Hal says, and I'm saying this as a friend, but the Guardians aren't all wrong. This is a faraway place with faraway rules interfering with that, pushing it in the wrong way. You can cause as much harm as you're trying to do good and man, isn't that an interesting summation of what's been going on in the Middle East for the last 20 some odd years. Uh, so, yeah. Not to get too heavily um, a political in, in a comic book, but, you know, it just kind of goes to show that their politics have always been in comics, and they're still in comics, and they can be in comics, and it's not bad if it's nuanced and well done and affects both the story at hand and um, accurately reflects some good conversation about the real world stuff. So um, Adam Strange kind of you know flips his lid here and you know tells uh, Jordan to f off and see as he um, walks out of the bar. So then we go back here to um, the library where Mr. Terrific finds the uh, uh, kind of catches the library and they're watching some sort of hot and spicy music video. I mean, you can see uh, what's going on there. She's singing a song and stuff. And so um, Terrific is asking the guys like, OK, I've read through all the Rainy and Donovan's documents. Give me the Bikit ones and the ones you guys couldn't translate. And the guy here is saying, um, uh, well, yeah, I thought someone told you it's pointless to look at those. We can't translate them. Uh, I wish I could, but it, it, in a dream, hell, I wish uh, one piquet had stayed and surrendered so they um, so they could help us translate them. Uh, but their suicide before capture policy was super strict, which is sad uh, for many reasons. But history, you know, it's the worst. And uh, Terrific's like, well... That's not a problem, he says. I I taught I speak Bikit. I taught it to myself uh, on the trip over. I translate. I'll translate them for you if you want. Just let me see the documents. It's like yo, the the thing that you said is the reason you couldn't give them to me. I've cleared that up, so you you can give me the documents in the library. It's like no, that that's not how this works. He says no no no, you're mistaken. I don't think you 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 know what you mean. Uh, Bikit is I mean scholars have worked for centuries to decipher a few phrases. It's one uh, of the Bikit's military advantages you can't break their code so I'm sorry yeah no it's impossible and you know not breaking being able to break codes as a military advantage that reminds me of both the Enigma machine from uh, World War II which there, there's a great movie about that uh, U571 it's a very fictional um, uh, fictionalized movie but it's a great movie and then also uh, the Navajo Code Talkers which there's a movie called Wind Talkers which is kind of more about Nicolas Cage in that movie than it is about the Wind Talkers but it's still a pretty decent movie uh, uh, war flick. And so then, of course, we've got uh, Mr. Terrific over here speaking to Kit and saying, um, let me translate that. That means it ain't that impossible. Now, where are the damn documents in Paquette? So he just lays it down for them and says, give me the documents. I know how to speak Paquette. All right, so then we go do our another flashback here with um, Adam Strange going to another uh, DC hero, basically saying, "Look, I need you um, to get me there." And this time, it's um, it's Superman. And again, just look at that Doc Shainer art. How gorgeous and just like picture perfect idyllic Superman is that on the moon, putting the U.S. flag back into place after um, after a fight. Really, really cool. And so this time he's asking Superman to take him, and Superman's like, "Um, yeah." These guys that we just um, beat up on the moon are Mongols, advanced scouts. He's probably headed here with the world world. Um, right now, I can't get you there in time. I understand what you, why you want to go back there. And he even says here, uh, no, Adam, I'm Superman. I have to help everyone, which means making decisions about how to help people, uh, help, how to help the most people. 
I'm not always right, but I do have to decide, and right now, I'm staying on Earth. We're not children. It's a war. There will be casualties. You'll be there in a week. I have faith in you to save that world. So he's like, look, I gotta stay here because there's more danger coming. You just have to figure out how to kill this week before you can get back there. I can't take you back. And then Strange does a stupid thing and punches Superman in the face. It's like, oh, God damn it. And then Superman's like, dude, you, you just broke your hand. And he's like, oh, you think, which is kind of hilarious. Then we get a couple uh, thirst trap panels down here for any of you guys out there that, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Draws a good, uh, draws a, draws a good, uh, uh, Mr. Terrific there, and so basically they're they're pissed that he was able to decipher the uh, the Bakit documents, which again just kind of uh, goes into what I was talking about earlier with them not wanting anyone to know what was in those documents because maybe they had something to hide, and he figures it out, and they're going to arrest him, and he's Mr. Terrific. It doesn't happen that way, so he uh, beats all their asses from the bed with his T spheres, uh, with his T spheres being very, very badass. Um, and then he's singing that song to himself, the one that he caught the librarian uh, watching earlier. And he says here, um, uh, this is a fucked up planet, but that song is fire, which just makes me wish that there was like actually a rendition of that song that I could listen to. It would be hilarious um, if there was. And then he uh, kicks one of them. like, hey, hey, wake up. Where was I supposed to go? And then uh, we get here um, uh, Adam Strange counting down the Zeta Beam um, to go back to the battlefield. Lands in the middle of just a slew of bodies with um, Rainian crows or vultures just picking uh, everything over. And you can see um, just how distraught he would be. And then we got um, uh, him, uh, Terrific, going back to the library and fighting with Sardath. And Sardath says, I was informed that you requested access to documents that um, you were told to be uh, officially unavailable to you. This is a violation of quite a few levels of trust, not to mention the agreement uh, you had upon coming here. I'm not sure how uh, I can let you proceed if you cannot be trusted to meet our obligations. Perhaps you have an explanation. And he says, I was told there was a problem, so I solved the problem. You got some of the reason I can't read those documents, Sardath? And he's like, uh, this is our planet. This is, it's not your privilege to ask. And he says, yeah, it's my privilege to sit here day after day looking at your propaganda papers. All that curated bullshit you gave me. Adam Strange, hero of two worlds. And he, Sardath is like indignant about it. He says, what? I am chief minister and you're in my house, the house of my people, the house of my uh, uh, my people died to rebuild, and you're calling me what a liar? He said, uh, "Terrific." Says back, "Mr. High Minister, I'm wondering if you could tell me where's your granddaughter? Where's Aaliyah Strange?" That's kind of the big mystery here. And then he gets he, dude uh, start out slaps Mr. Terrific, and then he gets smacked right back even worse. And he says, "You Earthman, you you dare touch me?" And then I love this line. From Terrific, he says, you hit me, I hit you. What the fuck do you think fair play means? Damn, Mr. Terrific spitting fire. And now this is the scene that I, I thought, I to me, reminded me of a scene from a, a classic movie that I've never actually seen, but I remember um, um, kind of watching something about the scene. I'll play it for you um, right here. We were just trying to clarify some of the evidence. Was Mr. Colbert ever in this greenhouse, say, last night, about midnight? Good, let's be. Yeah. You saw it. I saw it. Well, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. Hopefully I don't get a copyright strike for that, but you can kind of see what I mean. It definitely has some parallels here. Um, someone in power smacking down someone not in power, and then the person um, who would supposedly um, or um, you know historically be uh, suppressed gives gets right back and says, what are you going to do about it? We're here on even ground. Fair play. That's what we're asking for. Um, and so then... Um, 
when we get uh, we go you know back to um, Adam Strange getting um, a new jetpack from his his wife there, and then he she's kind of giving him a, a pep talk and says all the Heliotat are gathered uh, at the long seat in the millions, but there there is chaos among them. They endlessly quarrel. Uh, little matters uh, uh, of little matters of little honor just saying like they're basically at each other's throats raring to go they're waiting for you they want revenge my love they wait for adam strange he's about to go and uh, get back into the fight and maybe lead us to see what this actual war crime is um that he's accused of and you can see them uh flying off into uh back into battle and then we have a, another one in the present here with, again, Strange's wife looking very shady. She says, welcome home. Uh, I talked to father. You were in the political chamber and you hit him. My God, I know you can't understand, but frankly, it's blasphemy. I know you're trying to find problems with my husband, but I don't think you'll be looking for them on Rand again anytime soon. You ha and have you seen the news? I'm not sure Earth's the best place for you either. I'm not sure what that news is, and we don't get to see it um, in this particular issue uh, uh terrific says miss strange it's late i've traveled far and this is my house uh don't know how you got in here but you better get the hell out and then she says michael it's time for you to be done so she's basically trying to shut down the um shut down his um reporting here get him um to stop the investigation i love this quote um right here she says uh or the, it says we have uh, we had a sense of purpose and superiority only when things were going well when things were going badly of course it all went out the window from harvey kurtzman and then down here the last thing we see her saying from that flashback and says yes always and everything for ron so guys this was a phenomenal issue um of of this uh mini series here i'm really digging the direction that this is going i feel like it has a bunch of different layers and we're slowly seeing those things build up and get teased out now that we're about a quarter of the way um through this book i can't wait to see what it brings next i don't trust uh, adam strange's wife there's definitely some dirt something unseemly uh uh, going on in in ran after that war and i just can't wait to see what uh what comes of it so guys um i love this issue what did you think about this issue what do you think about my theories and how it, this this issue relates to the real world goings on let me know all your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below once again if you enjoyed this video go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me it would definitely mean a lot if you want to support the channel more than subscribing uh down in the description box i have a link to my patreon page as well as and ask me anything tip page where you can leave a tip to the channel uh, and ask a question or suggest a topic and I'll do a video on that question or topic right here on the channel. Once again guys thank you so much for watching and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop.